Hey mates, um, thanks for asking all these questions. I'm going to go through and answer them all now. Um, thank you everyone for being so involved and excited about the new record coming out. It's very exciting for all of us too. Um, and yeah, we feel very supported and loved by all of you, which means a lot to all of us. And I should be looking there. Um, yeah, thanks everyone. It's, it's, yeah, it's very exciting. Um, okay, and also I'm very sorry if I mispronounce your names. It's just because I'm a dumbass. First question. Tanasi, 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 say straight off, straight away. Uh, Dra Dragic, Dragic, fuck. It's a bad start. Okay, <laughs> that's a cool name, I'm just an idiot. Um, first question, what is my favorite part about making music? Is it the writing process, the live shows, recording, meeting people, etc.? Um, I love writing. It's something that I'm very uh, passionate about and something that I is sort of all-consuming. It's a sort of everything that happens to me, I filter through lyrics and, and writing songs and stuff, you know? So, um, yeah, I love writing. I love writing songs. I love writing them with the band. I love sitting right here on the deck and writing stuff that no one's ever going to listen to. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I love writing. Um, okay, another t two kind of writing questions. Uh, one from Seamus McCory and one from Craig Evans. Um, what's my songwriting process like? Do I sit down every day and force myself to write or wait till inspiration hits me? Uh, and Craig asked a similar question about writing a song every day, which is something that um, I do still try and do. I've always tried to do, uh, try and write a verse and chorus every day at least. Um, I'm definitely not successful in that every day. Um, but it's just about sitting down to write every single day, sitting down to go through my notes, go through little things that I've scribbled down and, and, and just always be thinking like a songwriter, kind of what I was saying before, like a... Yeah, to me, that's the most important thing. Like, it's not really writing a verse and chorus or trying to write a song every day. Like, 99% of that is gonna is shit if you're me. <laughs> Other people are probably better writers than me and get more good stuff out of that. But to me, so much of that is just, it's almost just getting out of my own way or like, you know, oh, there's things that I'm always worrying about that I've already written fucking too many songs about. It's sort of helpful to write that out of my system and move on to other things, other sort of topics and stuff. Um, but yeah, I definitely uh, sit down every day and, and write. And I think that that's a really important thing to do. Um, cool. Okay. Uh, okay. Another two uh, similar questions. One from Nick Bowen, Bowen, sorry. And one from Luke Kolakowski. I think Kolakowski, that's probably right, but it's also probably wrong. Um, when are we going to get another solo acoustic album and will there be plans to make another album? Like, I hope I don't come across intense. Um, short answer, solo acoustic album. Yes, there will be an, another new one. There could even be one in the works right now. Uh, but also there could not be. Um, yeah, we've got plenty of time. I've got an album written. There's a studio just over there. Uh, so... Who knows? Um, and will there ever be plans for making it? Oh, yeah. I hope I don't come across intense. Uh, that was like a, a demo tape, basically, that I released a while ago of just a bunch of songs that um, didn't make a <laughs> smithy songs, basically. Um, and, yeah, I definitely want to... Uh, I'll do something like that again. But I think the what worked for that release was it was just like a... Um, I just had a bank of songs that didn't make it, basically. And I, they're all just phone demos sort of recorded from all different places, you know, some at home, some in vans, some in hotels, whatever. Uh, and I think as soon as I've got another collection like that, um, I'll definitely release it, yeah. yeah. So, yes, yes to both. Um, Alistair Ferry asks, what is my favourite track off the new album, my favourite track ever? Um, favourite song on the new album, it really changes. Uh, I'm very proud of the song It's OK. Um, but probably God is Dead, I think. I really love uh, the kind of sounds sounds that we built, I guess, with that song. Um, and that song's quite emotional and means a lot to me. So that's probably my favourite song. And my favourite track ever, probably Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. Um, okay, next question. Bailey Johnson. I uh, wanted to ask, what are the songs you've recorded that you feel most proud of? Oh, sorry, I, my, uh, that was similar to the last one. What songs are I most proud of? Um, yeah, those ones. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's right. Uh, any, um, if I could change any songs, what would those changes look like? Um, I would honestly, and this isn't meant to be disrespectful, but I would probably change every, something on every song we've ever released. Um, because you learn so much as you go, uh, and there are so many things that you realise. But even with this last record, like, 
there's things on this that I've learned since, or in the process of making it and since we uh, released it, that oh, I wish I could go back in and tweak that and listen to it and go, oh, that line, I didn't nail that. Like, I wish, you know, like, I think that if you're, it's not satisfied because I'm very satisfied with things that we've released and I'm always proud and excited. But I think that if you're like, if you think that your most recent record's the best thing that you've ever done and you'll ever will do, then what's the fucking point? You know, like to me, every, making every record's a, almost just a learning process for making the next one. So yeah, there's things I go back and change in almost every song, but I also wouldn't change a thing, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I think that listening back to old stuff and, you know, they were saying that I listened to a few songs of More Scared of You than you are of me when we were mainly sort of mixing this record. And like, I'm so proud of that album. And I think that everyone that worked on it did a great job. I think it sounds really good. There's still things in every song that's like, oh, I would have, I would have done that slightly differently. Uh, and I think that that's, you know, if you're resting on your laurels too much in, in any job but I think particularly as a songwriter like uh you're just gonna get boring pretty quick um and I'm trying to not be boring <laughs> so I don't know if I'm succeeding but I'm doing my best um, okay question from Connor Hunter um what is my oh my favorite tour I've ever been on um oh, fuck uh we've been very 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 lucky to have uh been able to travel a lot playing music um been uh we've also been very lucky like bands like i've been frank turner has been incredibly supportive uh front bottoms are another band that have basically taken us around the world with them and let us support them and really uh some of my favorite memories are of touring with both those bands um we did a week of shows in china once that was really fucking fun it was really cool uh and then big ah oh, oh, yeah uh Groove in the Moo. Groove in the Moo could actually be my all-time favourite now I think about it. Like, uh, those touring festivals are so fun. They're really easy. <laughs> like, you know, showing up and playing for 40 minutes at 5 o'clock compared to showing up and playing for, like, an hour and 40 minutes at uh, midnight kind of thing. Like, they're so fun. They're so sort of easy to do. I love hanging out backstage at festivals because everyone's like dressed very nice and um very cool and then you go to like our little corner of the festival and all of us like look like shit and <laughs> just like hanging out and never but i feel like we're always having the most fun um but yeah i loved grooving the moon was fucking so fun it was really special uh and yeah getting to watch and meet against me on that tour was like yeah that was something i'll cherish for the rest of my life um also, I'm definitely forgotten a million tours there. Then I'm going to see as I get to the next question and I go, ah, oh, fuck. Um, oh, the more scared of you than you ever album tour. That was great too. Okay. Um, Caden Godfrey asks, why is Sigourney Weaver the title? Um, yes, yeah, so I have a song called Sigourney Weaver. Um, and it's not, it's, uh, I think it's Aliens, which is the second one, or it might have been Alien 3, but I think it's Aliens. There's one of those movies where she is ha basically has a nightmare and then in the nightmare she has one of those those alien monster things bursting out of her. Um, and then she wakes up from the nightmare and realises that she didn't have the alien. Uh, and that, yeah, that line was just about trying to, like, waking up hungover and feeling like I'm going to vomit, basically, which is, shouldn't really explain lyrics. Um, but, yeah, that's what that line is about. It's about waking up and feeling like Sigourney Weaver when she had a terrible nightmare that an alien was bursting out of her chest because things were bursting out of me. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, Chewy Eid asks, what are the chances of you guys doing the weekend at the Wonk again? Um, well, sadly, the, the mighty Wonky Donkey has actually changed hands, so changed owners. So doing weekend at the Wonk again might not be a possibility, but we did see Juddy and the gang in Geelong, which was fucking awesome to see those guys. Um, but that there's something... Uh, just actually not long before sort of isolation and stuff was enforced, Bosmer and I went out and did a bit of scouting and um, found somewhere pretty fucking awesome to do something. So I don't think Weekend at the Wonk, uh, like in Forest, will happen again. But, um, yeah, we're definitely not done putting on big festivals. That's, yeah, we're going to do that again for sure. Uh, okay, next question from Bailey Ackling Beecham. Um, Favourite movie? Uh 
I should have read these questions and thought about this because I'm probably going to get it wrong. My favourite movie. Uh, I tell you what, it's it's too new to be my favourite movie, but I've I've watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood a lot. I've probably watched that four or five times since it came out. I fucking love that movie. Uh, a Parasite. Outstanding. Um, I didn't know anything about it and a friend recommended it to me and then like, fuck, that movie's amazing. It just looks so good. The characters are incredible. That's like, yeah, Parasite's right up there. Um, all time phase, Inglorious Bastards, I fucking love. I'm a big Tarantino fan, which is like, oh, what a unique thing. I also like the Beatles. Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, actually, I can't believe I didn't think of this first. My favorite movies of all time are the three Christopher Nolan Batman movies. Uh, and I will watch them if I, they're ever on telly, I'll watch them. If they're ever on a plane, I'll watch all three of them. Like, I fucking love those movies. The Dark Knight particularly, but all three of them are just sensational. So fucking good. Um, okay, next question. Hamish Ferguson. How long does it take to write each song? And also when you write those emotional songs, do I get dragged back into those dark feelings? Um, when you get dragged back into those dark feelings would mean that I was dragged away from them at some point, which doesn't really happen for me. So uh, I'm normally living in those bad feelings. Um, <clears throat> and how long it takes to write each song is so different, honestly. Like uh, there are some songs that have literally taken five minutes and then there are songs that have I've been writing for five years and I'm still working on, you know what I mean? Like uh, really depends. Sometimes you just get those fucking bolts from the blue and it's just like, right, I have to rush it and write down something right now because this is happening, you know what I mean? And so that's, like, really exciting. And then sometimes it's, like, a line every month that you go, oh, I can add that to that fucking never-ending thing that I'm writing. So, yeah, it really changes. Uh, it really changes for me. Uh, Nate Wishhart asks, what's the hardest song for me to play personally? Um, strangely, I don't really like playing Ducks Fly Together anymore, but it's weird. Like, there are songs that... Yeah, there are songs that I don't like playing as much. I'm not really... I don't think we'll play song for you again. Maybe ever. <laughs> but also, like... So, yeah, it's something like Ducks Fly Together, like... Or even any of the older songs, you know, like Young Drunk, like... Songs I've played a million times, like... I, uh, it's more of a chance for me to sort of think about where that song has... Young Drunk's a perfect example. Like, I don't need to think when we play that song live because I've played it. 1500 times you know what I mean if I did stop and think about it I would probably fuck it up um but like playing that song means that I get to take a step back and and stand there and almost watch the show you know what I mean like so playing something like Young Drunk at a sold out show or at a big festival or something is amazing because I can lean back and think like fucking hell like I remember writing this song I never thought anyone was going to listen to it, you know what I mean? Like, there's something really, um, really special about that. But yeah, hardest song to play personally. We don't really play that anymore, so. <laughs> um, Kate Page. Oh, Kate Page. Oh, familiar name. Oh, hi. Um, what is my go-to Uber order? Uh, no Uber Eats out here, unfortunately. Um, but it really depends. Uh, in Melbourne, what's, what's my go-to in, in town? Um... I like that Japanese place, Rice Workshop or something like that. Um, I like I like Thai and Vietnamese food a lot. Um, I like sashimi a lot. Uh, Lord of the Fries, if I'm feeling like punishing myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to th now I'm just trying to think of like what my favourite place to eat in Melbourne is. Uh, oh, there's a place called Nelian. There's one in the city and one in Glen Ferry. It's like an Indonesian restaurant. I should probably be looking at this and not just staring off into the forest. Um, but I love, I love that place. Um, but as you can probably tell by looking at me, big fan of food. Um, Craig Evans asked, what's the artwork in the studio? Oh, um, <clears throat> so my friend, uh, uh, one of my mum's best friends who I've known my whole life is an amazing painter called Erica Wagner. Um, and she painted the thing that I had behind me, um, in that video that we released. And then there's a little frame thing that my sister made, um, saying, and we'll walk in the sun, like a little uh, Springsteen lyric in a frame, um, which my sister makes so many cool little things like that. There's one on the front door of the house as well that says, welcome to Bush House. Uh, and there's an amazing painting that Jess Locke did um, that I bought of her, and that's on the wall in there. And then there's this cool stuffed cat thing that someone made me. Um, uh, I think 
Oh, fuck, I should have looked that up. If you made that cool stuff to cat, it's very cool. I like it a lot. I'm sorry, I forgot your Instagram handle. <laughs> and yeah, the biggest work of art of all is that um, Collingwood photo book that's in there. That, that's definitely where I get most of my inspiration from. Um, Abraham Bamford asks, which song on the album took the most time to finish the lyrics and where do I get inspiration from? Um, well, I get inspiration from colour photo books of Collingwood Magpies. <laughs> um, which song took the most time to finish the lyrics? <clears throat> Probably Heaven Eleven, I think. Yeah, Heaven Eleven. Because, yeah, that there's like a chorus that's very old and then uh, those verses sort of changed a lot. Yeah, pro probably Heaven Eleven took the longest time. Um, and where is the inspiration drawn from? Uh, every, every, Everywhere. Uh, I draw inspiration from whatever I can that gives me any form of inspiration. Um, Daniel Codd. Uh, and Jack Sheen. Are these similar questions because they're together? Oh, how did I learn guitar? To what level do I know it? Like, do I know the theory stuff as well? Nope. <laughs> It'd be very helpful if I did, but I don't. Uh, who are my major influences growing up? And then Jack Sheen asked a question about artists I was listening to when I was writing the new album. Um, uh, yeah, no, I didn't. I've had, I had sort of guitar lessons. I learned Suzuki when I was very young, like finger picking. Uh, it's like a method where you don't learn music, but you learn to um, pick up stuff by ear, which is actually quite helpful. Like I've got, you know, if I hear a song, I can kind of figure out the key at least kind of quite quickly, which is really helpful from that Suzuki training. Uh, but I'm definitely not like a trained musician in any way, and I can't read music, which is so fucking dumb. <laughs> I really should be able to. Um, my major influences growing up and now, and uh, yeah, artists that I was listening to when we wrote this new record. Um, I'm not sure if Boss has posted it yet, but I did make a... Um, Spotify playlist of a bunch of bands, uh, songs that sort of inspired this record. Um, one of my major influences growing up, Bruce Springsteen, Billy Bragg, Paul Kelly, Bob Dylan, uh, all the, all the great lyricists, really. Uh, we were always, my, my parents love music. My, my dad makes music and we listen to a lot. We always listen to a lot of music growing up. Um, and yeah, Springsteen's the one that he's like my favorite guy. Um, <laughs> So yeah, he's the one that really, really inspired me. I drew a lot of inspiration from. Um, but also, uh, what I was listening to and writing the new record, like, uh, yeah, there's a play. Uh, yeah, anyway, there's a <laughs> no editing. There's a Spotify playlist that we're going to post with a bunch of songs. But I wanted to listen to as much like podcasts as I do music, really. Like, uh, especially when we're working on stuff, and I'm like writing. I'm basically either listening to things that I'm writing at the time or I'm listening to um, podcasts. So uh, I love all of the shows on the Earwolf Network. That's a handy little plug that I'm drinking my coffee out of here. Uh, I love Comedy Bang Bang. I love um, Are You Talking You Two to Me and Are You Talking R.E.M. Re Me. And, of course, Analyze Fish, R.I.P. Harris Whittles. Um, and I like, there's lots of, I love like Tofop and uh, Two Guys, One Cup and like the Will Anderson, Charlie Corson podcast. I love Junk Time. It's another funny footy podcast. Filthy Casuals. Shout out to Filthy Casuals and Little Dumb Dumb Club, both like hosted by Tommy Dasselow and some other funny folks. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I find podcasts like, uh, oh, fucking Case File. Jesus Christ. I should have looked at these questions and written a list. Um, Case File is an amazing Australian true crime podcast. Um, but yeah, I find listening to podcasts really, really helpful when I'm writing. It's all when we're touring and it's like, there's music all the time. You get in the van, there's music. You get to the venue, there's music, there's music, there's music, there's music. And sometimes I find it so helpful to put on, oh, and I've forgotten to mention my favorite podcast of all time. And maybe my favorite thing of all time, which is Doughboys, which is two Americans, like writer, comedian, funny guys, uh, like earnestly reviewing fast food restaurants that I've never been to. Um, but I, I fucking love it so much. And it's because like, as we listen to some beautiful bird song out here, I hope you're picking up the lovely sounds of nature. Um, it's because like, if I'm listening to music or I'm writing and I'm, it's all this heavy headspace. And then sometimes it's just so fucking nice to like put on headphones and get a break from my own fucking negative internal monologue and listen to, yeah, two strangers interview uh, discuss restaurants I've never been to. You know what I mean? Listen to something that's just fun and light and frivolous and inconsequential. And uh, yeah, so I love podcasts for that reason. Shout out to Doughboys. 
Spread Nation. <laughs> Aaron Fremantle. With all this free time, what are the chances you'll drop the long-awaited rap album? Chances are slim, Aaron. I'm very sorry. Um, I've been making a lot of fun music with my synth and beat things and stuff in there, but that's all for me. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, I need a creative outlet that's not also my full-time job uh, and doesn't have all of these things. You know what I mean? Like, all these, you know... Writing songs that I know are going to be Smith Street songs, there's, I really try and not have it in my back of my mind, but there is this thing that's like, well, seven people earn a living off these songs, and like, you know, then plus all of our crew, and there's, uh, there's, a, there's like a bit of pressure on some of that songwriting, you know what I mean? But for me, writing rap music that I know is embarrassing and no one's ever going to listen to uh, is very freeing for me. So, Aaron Fremantle, if you ever come round, we can sit and listen to my terrible rap album together, but I don't think it's going to. It's not coming out of the pool house. <laughs> and a question from Darcy Garten. Will, are there any plans to release Live at the Triffid on vinyl? Um, I don't know. Good question. It's probably too long. Because um, records, I think they've got to be like 35 to 40, maybe like 40, 45 minutes uh, to fit on a vinyl and have it sound crap. Maybe we'll do a double vinyl. Um, but yeah, that was just a thing that we that, um, oh fuck, I've forgotten the name of the person that recorded it because I'm a piece of shit, but it sounded really good. The person who recorded it did a great job. Um, and we just had it there and we were sort of like, oh, should we do this with it? Should we do that with it? Thinking, oh, maybe that'll be like a, um, you know, a second, uh, a bonus disc for this new record or something like that. And then when coronavirus happened and, um, we had to cancel shows and all of our crew was going to be out of work for a while. We just were like, well, we've got this thing sitting here that we want to do something with, but we couldn't quite figure it out. And it was just like, oh, perfect. We can use that to cover everyone's lost wages, uh, which we did. So thank you, everyone. I think we did. Shouldn't be saying things like that where I don't know. We definitely got close. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you to everyone for buying that record. Um, Scott Brown asks, what happened to that song, Lost Dog? It was grim but cool. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's quite grim, that song. Um, that was going to be the first and last song on this record, actually. It's split up into two parts. And then uh, that was something that we recorded and it just didn't quite make it. But um, I'm going to do something with that song. Maybe that's going to be on a solo record or something. I'm, I am going to do something with that. I like that song. Reese McQuillan. Hi, Will. What new song are you most looking forward to playing when you can tour again? Um, Profiteering is fun to play, but it's fucking hard to sing. I've got to think about that when I write songs. I always write songs in impossible registers for me to sing over too many words. I'm like, oh, no, I'll be fine. Kind of get through it in practice and then playing it for the first time. I'm like, ooh! Um, <laughs> but yeah, Profiteering is going to be exciting. I'm looking forward to playing Don't Waste Your Anger, the song. Um, I'm looking forward to playing all these new songs, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing gigs, <laughs> if that'll ever happen again. Um, okay, Catherine Wilkinson. What am I passionate about? Uh, the Collingwood Football Club, <laughs> Club. Uh, is a joke answer, but also kind of a real answer. I'm really, really passionate about football. Um, I'm, re I'm passionate about a lot of things, but something that I've been, and kind of ties into talking about the Mighty Pies, like uh, something I've been thinking a lot about lately is like, what is, what's my job in this, these times? You know, I mean, like, what is the job of, Enter entertainers, for lack of a better phrase, you know what I mean? Like, and to me, like, my, and this is kind of my purpose anyway, and, and the purpose of music, but like, to me, my job right now is to make a record that the people that are out there saving lives and fucking stocking shelves in supermarkets and doing these, these, these dangerous things, like, to me, the point of music is to make something that those people, you know, to make something that an, nurse can put on in their car driving home from a shift you know what I mean and like listen to something and get a bit of relief or get some anger out or get whatever it is like and that's something that I'm really sort of I've thought about a lot lately and I'm really passionate about like what is the purpose of music in a society in society and what is the purpose of music in a society like the one that we're living in now that's kind of falling down um, and it's to entertain the people that are actually out there making a real difference, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and that, yeah, that's something that I'm really passionate about as a musician is, uh, yeah, providing, re it's not even relief, but I don't know if, 
the idea that if you've had a bad day and can then get in your car or get on the tram or whatever and put on uh, music and that helps you get through that bad day, that's that's the reason, that's the whole purpose of, of music to me. So, yeah, that's something I'm very passionate about. What else am I passionate about? I don't know, that's it. No, lots of stuff. Um, okay, Drew Dorman asks, how does my writing style change between solo music and Smith Street band songs? And was there any material, if I hope I don't come across intense, that I was considering for a Smith Street album? Uh, yeah, all of it. And then all of it got rejected. Um, no, that's probably not true. Um, but... No, not really. I try and stay out of my own way as much as possible when writing. Like, if I'm writing something, I don't think, oh, this will be a good solo, this will be a good Smith Street. I just try and write the song as it was meant to be written. You know what I mean? Um, I just try and, yeah, I just try and write. So I uh, I don't really change my writing process all that much, except, like, you know, if I've written something and it's like, oh, this is heavy, I was start thinking of it in a heavy sense and I've written something in like, okay, this is obviously like quite quiet and fragile. Um, you know, I'll kind of lean into either of those, but even still like something being quiet and fragile and a quote unquote solo song might still wind up on a Smith Street record. You know what I mean? So I, I just try and do whatever's best for the song. Um, Joshua Maloney, Mahoney asks, what happened to the Smash Telecaster from the Croxon show last year? Um, it is repaired and sitting in the studio. Uh, Actually, I've got to screw in the um, input plate or whatever it's called on it. But, um, yeah, I bought a new neck for it and Matt, I don't know how to put it on, which is very kind of him. Um, yeah, that was not my finest moment on stage, that show. I'm quite embarrassed about that. I just was in a terrible place and had a lot of pressure, which is not excusing. And I just kind of, I, I lost it and it sucked. It was, yeah, it was embarrassing. That's something that's, if you spend a lot of your time in front of people, uh, Sometimes you're gonna have really bad moments in front of people on stage, and that was not my only, not my only one. But um, yeah, that was a embarrassing thing that I still, if I think about it, I go, <laughs> uh, which is great that I put a line about it in a song, and now I have to sing about it every night. Okay, <laughs> Chrissy Leo asks, "Hi, Will. Bought some records a while back, and Clue was a book about Lyca. I was wondering if me and Lizzie released any other books, and where was this one sold? Get it sold? Get it signed in Ballarat, just down the road." Um. No, me, that my, that uh, my sister illustrated a um, Lizzie Wagner. Lizzie Wagner uh, illustrated this beautiful book about the lyrics for a song of mine called Lyca. Um, we should do that again, shouldn't we? I might text Bosma about that after, or text Bos and Liz after that after this is done. That's a really good idea. Um, so uh, that I think we just sold it at. I think we just sold it on the merch desk at shows. We might even still have copies. Maybe we'll dig some more up. But. Um, yeah, we should do that again. Thanks, Chrissy. That's a good idea. Um, Cameron Wyatt asks, what's my favourite Frightened Rabbit song? Fuck. Head rolls off. That whole run on, like, like keep yourself warm, head rolls off on Midnight Organ Fight is so incredible. Midnight Organ Fight's one of my favourite records ever. I love Pedestrian Verse as well. That record's fucking great. Oh, I should have thought about this and written down songs. But, yeah, probably Head Rolls Off. That... Uh, yeah, they're so fucking good. What a band. R.I.P. Scott. Um, yeah, what a fucking band. What a band. Um, John Graham. Hi, Will. Cranker, Unibar, The Gov, or Thebby Theatre? Thebby Theatre, baby. Uh, it's the biggest, and it feels fucking cool playing that big old fucking hall. Uh, and once I got to do a song from an opera box there, which was very exciting. So, yeah, love the Theb. Love, love the Thebby. Love the Thebby. Nathan Mitzel asks, what would you want a new fan's first Smithy song to be? That's a really good question. Silence isn't very interesting in the video, but I've got to actually think of it. That's a really good question. Um, maybe the song, Don't Waste Your Anger on the New Record. I'm trying to think of something that's like Smithies-esque or something like that. That's oh, that's 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 a really good question. I'd actually be interested in seeing what other people say about that. Um, because it's a hard thing. I know that's uh, I know that with podcasts a lot. Like trying to say to someone like, "Hey, I love this thing," uh, but I know all about it and I've listened to all of it. And it's like, where do I find this entry point for people to get into this thing that I like? So yeah, that's a really interesting question. Um, yeah, maybe don't waste your anger. Maybe like Passiona or something like that. Um, good question. Good question, Nathan. Um, okay, Kane Haggett and Ma Marley Mally Gordon 
Uh, so yeah, two similar questions. Are we going to pick up the last two legs of the tour when it's called a tour again? And are we planning an Australian tour when the government allows it? Yes and yes, baby. Um, yeah, we'll pick up those last six shows that we cancelled as soon as we can. Um, obviously, we don't. none of us don't really know when that's going to be. Um, and yeah, we're in constant contact with... We, bas we actually had uh, Don't Waste Your Anger, a release date and a tour booked and all this stuff planned for it. And then... We just sort of brought it all forward because the world ended. So um, we're still in constant contact with all those venues about doing that tour. And yeah, no, yeah, we are fucking touring this record and touring forever. Uh, so yeah, as soon as the government lets us, we'll, we'll be back, I promise. Um, okay, this is my last question. Chris <laughs> Chris DeBono asks, "Do I, a question from my hottest fan, do I think Lee is the hottest in the band? Yes. 